Good morning and a happy Sabbath. Uh, we welcome you to our Sabbath school this morning. Uh, today is our Women Ministry Day and we are thanking God for all the women among us in our lives and hope my two brothers this morning appreciate and recognize the women in their lives. So we want to thank God for giving us yet another Sabbath and yet another morning. Thank you for joining us from wherever you're joining us from. We are in lesson nine this morning as we, jo we, we start our lesson discussion. And we have, uh, we have had an amazing, amazing eight lessons and lessons that have been a great, great lessons that have changed our lives. And I hope they have changed your life too. So before we begin and I introduce my panelists, shall we begin in prayer? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you this morning for giving us another day, Lord, that we may study your word, O oh God. Father, without your Holy Spirit, what would we learn? And what would we tell another? So we pray that, God, you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. You would forgive our sins beginning with me. And we pray that, Lord, as we share this morning, you would speak to us and teach us and change our hearts. Be with us this morning and in our, with our viewers. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So welcome to our Sabbath school this morning. It's good to have you. This morning we're looking at beware of covetousness. And it's amazing because last week um, we were looking at uh, uh, planning for success. But before we start, let me introduce my panelists. Um, let me start with my brother Morris, who is joining us quarter for the first time. Happy Sabbath. Your name, please. Oh, you already said my name. My name is Morris Ongala. And I'm a member of this church. Happy Sabbath. Good to have you, Maurice. And Elder Jared? Uh, happy Sabbath, everyone. I thank God that he has given us an opportunity to be here once again to learn at his feet. And uh, to the ladies, today we pray for you that God may give you abundant blessings. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And may you do the same for the women in your lives. Amen. So this morning, beware of covetousness. I wonder what covetousness is. And last week we were looking at planning for success. And we saw that the kingdom of God is one that desires that we may be successful. But it also has no room for laziness and, and it has no room for lack of integrity. So we want to see this morning, so what is this that keeps us from being faithful? What is this that, keeps us, you know, that makes us desire that? not belongs to us that which you don't have or that which belongs to your neighbor and so as we're looking at the lesson this morning and i want us to look at what our memory verse that comes from the book uh, from luke chapter 12 verse 15 and it says take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses and we have been talking this week, um, I mean this lesson, the importance of realizing that possessions are just that. You know, we've got, God has given us money and tools and properties that help make this life comfortable here. But I don't think we should hold them too close to our hearts that we should forget that there is a hope to come in heaven. And so I will look at what our, our, our writer was, talking, was, was defining covetousness because it's nice for us to understand covetousness. And it says, covetousness has been defined as an inordinate desire for wealth or possession that do not belong to you. That's very interesting. So you have this inordinate desire to have wealth or possessions that actually do not belong to you. So whether they belong to another or it's something that you desire to have that you, you don't have yet. And covetousness is a big deal. Big enough, in fact, to be right up there, not uh, there with not stealing, not lying, not stealing or murder. It is damaging that God chose to warn against it in his moral law. As in the, the, the Ten Commandments says, thou shalt not covet the neighbor's property. You know, thou shalt not covet your neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's uh, wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox or his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And that comes from Exodus 20, 17. So... Covetousness is frequently listed with the heinous sins that will keep one out of the kingdom of God. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, nor ad adulterers, nor effem effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. So, covetousness right up there with extortion, idolatry, um, ad idolatry, uh, fornication, and, and adultery. That 
what the text says, that this week we will look at the examples of how bad it is and how we can overcome it. I was looking at that summary, and I'll start with you, Maurice. I was looking at that summary, and I realized covetousness is really, is really a real sin, eh? and I don't think we realize because it's an internal sin. It's an internal sin, and so sometimes I have no way of knowing that you actually um, want to become me or you want that which belongs to me. I don't know what stood out for you this week, Maurice. Thank you, Marcy. Just as you're pointing out, covetousness is a heart sin. Mm. It's an internal sin. It's, it's, it's the same type of sin as selfishness or, um, you know, um, you know, the pride, you know. So um, there, there are those types of sins that one commits and it is not visible. Mm. There is no proof. <laughs> mm. You cannot prove that I'm, I'm coveting right now, you know. And, and, and it's dangerous. That makes it really dangerous because you, 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 it becomes difficult to admonish such a sinner. Mm. It becomes difficult to reprove them because then what on what basis are you reproving them? It, it's something that is internal. Yeah. So, so what, what really stands out for me is that at this particular stage of our study, of this uh, week's study, is that covetousness is actually ranked as high as, you know, it's ranked together with, you know, with, with, with idolatry. Mm. And, and idolatry is a big deal. Yeah. Worshipping false gods. Yeah. You know, when, when, when the Israelites uh, uh, were led by, fo by various kings to worship the idols, uh, when, for example, um, you know, King Solomon built several uh, altars of, of false gods across mm -hmm. Israel, and, and, and Ahab and Jezebel, you know, worshipped Baal and led the whole nation to worship Baal. Uh, you know, it was a big deal for God. And, and, and God, God makes it clear, even in the Ten Commandments, that thou shalt not have any other gods before me. So, so, so when God says in the first commandment that thou shalt not have any other gods before me, and he concludes in the tenth commandment that thou shalt not covet, and he, and he lists all those things that should not be coveted, it is, and, and it, just, it just comes to, 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 I mean, to life, it brings to life the fact that if you, if you transgress one commandment, you actually transgress all the other nine. So, so, so um, uh, I think Covetousness is actually the root of all these other, you know, sins. If you if you if you look at uh, covetousness keenly, then you realize that it is connected to almost all the other nine, you know. And and then the ultimate origin of of, of sin is uh, actually covetousness, because looking at um, Satan, we are told the story of of Satan, and there was war in heaven, and 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 Michael and his angels fought, you know, against against Lucifer. And Lucifer did not prevail because Michael and his angel, and Michael and, and his angels here is actually Christ Jesus, who is the leader of, of the angelic host of heaven. And, and this war uh, 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 turned out, I mean, ended up or culminated into the throwing of Lucifer down to earth, out of heaven, being ejected out of heaven. But before that, we read in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 14, uh, 12 to 12 to 14 about um, you know how Lucifer was fallen uh, I think I think I just want someone to read that for us are you able to get Elder. it quickly yeah. yes it, it's going to be really instructive for us because covetousness was actually at the heart of Lucifer's fall Isaiah 12 so, yeah. Isaiah 14 I mean Verse 12. I can read it verse as others trying read to get it. it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah 14 from verse 12 to 14, the Bible says, yes. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will descend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars no, of let's, God. Let's go step by step from mm. there. You have, Lucifer said to himself that, I mm -hmm. will ascend into heaven. heaven. Then mm -hmm. I will do what? Exalt my throne I above the stars of God. I will exalt my throne above, above the stars. The stars of God here are the angels mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to be on top of the angels. Of, of course, he was the prince of the angels. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to be above. Can we read the, the third eye that he wanted to do? I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. Now, he wants to sit. That is, that is something that... I mean, it's just to say that he wants to sit in the, in, in, in the throne of God. Mm. All right? Uh -huh. Yes. 
on the father's side of the on north. On the father's side of the north. Yes. Because the king of the north actually is God himself. Yes, so he wants to sit on the father's side mm. of the side of God. You know? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then? And I will ascend above the height of the clouds. Uh -huh. I will be like the most high. Now, I will be like mm -hmm. the most high. Mm -hmm. Is this not, are these not the thoughts that come to our minds when we covet? Mm -hmm. When you see someone's brand new car, mm -hmm. and they're just parking, and then you're like, wow, mm -hmm. I want that car. Mm -hmm. I, I can do anything to get it. Mm -hmm not caring that anything could even be evil, you know? When you see someone build a house, not knowing the sources of their wealth, not knowing the, the resources, where the resources have come from, not knowing the pains and all the ease with which they got that, you, 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 you are, you are, you, the last of your eyes just want you to, to get it. You feel like you are the one who deserves it. You want to be there. These are the exact same thoughts were in the, that were in the mind of Lucifer. And this, um, I dare say, preceded pride. It's because of this heart of covetousness that pride was found in Lucifer. So we realize that therefore covetousness is the ultimate origin of sin, you know. And, and, and just, just to wrap this up again, um, um, idolatry, when, um, when, when uh, King Agag refuses to utterly kill or destroy the Amalekites and their wealth. Uh, in, I mean, uh, not King Agag, but King, King Saul. So he goes to Amalek, but contrary to God's instruction, he, he spares Agag, who is the king of Amalek, and he destroys every other thing, women, children, wealth, but for the fat rams and the fatlings and the bulls, he, he, he spares them and takes them with him to, to Israel. And when the prophet of God, Samuel, comes and asks him, he gives excuses. Now, don't we also just give excuses the same way? Kwamba, I, I brought this over, you know, to, 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 to sacrifice mm. to the Lord. Yes. I brought this over to, to, to offer thanksgiving, you know, to... Mm. I, I mean, does God... And then he's, he's, he's being asked a simple question. Does God delight in, in uh, offering or in sacrifice mm. over obedience? Mm -hmm. And then he's, it's concluded beautifully by, and powerfully by mm. saying that of disobedience is like witchcraft. Yes. Now you can imagine if these sins are being equated to each other like mm. this. When I first read that disobedience was actually as the sin of witchcraft mm -hmm. and today we are reading that covetousness is it's like the sin of adultery, adultery. Mm. I mean idolatry, idolatry. Mm. then I think all these commandments are connected and we need to beware. No wonder we are told beware. Of covetousness. Yeah, you know, be before I go... When, when you're told beware, it means it's something that's really subtle. Mm. You are likely to pa it's likely to pass your attention. Mm -hmm. So you're told beware. When you're walking and, and there's some thorns around, you're told beware. Mm -hmm. You are likely not to see those thorns, mm -hmm. but you're told beware because it's something that is still thing. Mm. It's still thing. You may not be able to see, to see it. it. Yes. Oh, thank you, Maurice. And Elda, I wonder what your thoughts are around. So uh, we, we see in First Timothy chapter 6 um, and verse 7, the Bible says, uh, First Timothy, let me just read that for you. First Timothy, um, we're told that uh, 6 and 7, it says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For what we brought nothing into this world, and will, it is certain that we will carry nothing out. Elder, I'm wondering, we've, we've heard about the ultimate sin. As we look at this, how do these words, how would these words protect us from the sin of covetousness, which we have now come to realize is quite evil? Um, thank you, my sister. <coughs> Um, I, I, I'm just looking at covetousness and we're told beware. And I know if we had time, each one of us explained to us in their own language the meaning of this word. It is really deep. It is bad desire. And in this bad desire, what I foresee in covetousness is a desire to kill and a desire to die. What do I mean? If I see Morris's car, I eliminate him from that car. <laughs> so that it is what? It's mine. So when I see what he has, or when I see what you have, I don't see you. <laughs> I just erase you. Then, these that I have, I'd rather die than part with it. 
that's how bad covetousness is and that's why the bible is telling us to be content with what we have we brought nothing into this world remember when we were born i don't remember anyone who was born uh, putting on clothes <laughs> yes all this we received while in this earth after we have been born the moment we realize who is he who gives us what wealth the bible says in deuteronomy i think uh, should be 8 17 and 18 it is god who gives us the power to get what to get wealth once we understand that and also understand that everything on earth belongs to who to god is the one who desires whom he is going to give yeah. then realizing mm -hmm. actually the title of this quarter's lesson mm. that managing for the master it does not belong to, to me. we are just what Manage. managers mm. once we realize that mm. we will know when i look at sister Masi, mm. i will see her as a manager of some resources like you are a head of a department. <laughs> Morris is another head of a department managing what has been assigned to him. And then I see what I have as something that I've been given to manage for the master. Amen. And that will protect us from those evil desires yes. of covetousness. Oh, amen, Elder. Thank and you. I still want to come back to you as we look at the scene of Achan. Because Achan is one, uh, is, is one character in the Bible who really saddens us. Because you see what covetousness can lead to when you see a man a man's sin that was internal as you had said maurice a sin that was a heart sin but that leads to the death of many people yeah and i want us uh, elder if you could take us through uh monday part that talks about the accursed thing is in the camp and then we can think are there accursed things in our homes that we should we should be beware of okay thank you my sister <coughs> um this uh, sin of covetousness eh? we were brought forth in sin that's what the bible says so sin is in us and it is something we struggle with as paul says in roman chapter 7 we read all the way to 24 who can save me from this board of wretchedness that is the question it is something that we struggle with look at when we were children how many things did we steal when we went visiting? Yeah. <laughs> we also have children. Yeah. How many times do they steal yeah. other children's items? Yeah. You just discover them when you have arrived where? Mm, at home. At home. Yeah. This is the issue that we have. Yeah. Every other day, yeah. do we find out what the seat mm -hmm. that might bring trouble mm. to us? Look at the Israelites. They went to the battle at Ai. And they lost. Not just lost. But the lives were, were lost. Were lost. Mm. Because of one man. And this is what I was saying. Mm. That you don't see anyone. You don't care what happens. As long as you get hold of that item that you desire. You don't care. Now... When you look at uh, Akan, he went, he saw these things, and he just desired them. Not just appreciating, you know, uh, we need to differentiate appreciation from what? Covetousness. Appreciation is when I see your house and say, hey, Sister Mercy. Thank God that he has given you an opportunity to build such a house. That's appreciating. Covetousness is when I feel like, why did God give this to me and not who? And not to mercy. Now, <clears throat> you realize that God has brought these people out of bondage. And they are on their way and god is giving them victory over what victory 
Can you imagine when God is your what? Your commander. And then you go and do what? And lose. Akan. He knew what was expected of him. But he went ahead. Acquired this. And even when Joshua is trying to find out why. And God tells him the problem is where? It's in the camp. Now, people still refuse to acknowledge. And this is Akan. Until at that moment when he's what? Confronted. And he knew in his heart that he had coveted. In fact, when you read Joshua chapter 7, verse 19, I was shocked. Uh, no, no, verse 21. And this word he says, and he even uses the same word. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment. Goodly. He saw it is good, eh? And 200 shekels of silver and a wage of gold of 50 shekels weight. <laughs> then I coveted them. That is shocking. Can you imagine you know what you are doing? I coveted them and took them. And behold, they hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. You see this man, he has seen. And he has taken and hidden. And ensuring that nobody else accesses what? That is the sin of covetousness. And you realize that a number of times, mm -hmm. this is what we entertain mm. in our hearts. And I was looking at the examples that we are given um, in this uh, week's lesson. They were shocking. That you desire so much that you are not letting go, you rather die. And this is what happened to Akan. He was ready to do what? To die. Thank you. Elder, not only was he ready to die, Maurice, he was ready to let go of his wife and children and relatives, as in they all died on the account of one man. And I, and, and, and I want us to move because um, today we, we, we are sort of short of time. Um, but as we, I was thinking of Akan and wondering, are there things in our contemporary world that we bring to our homes, yeah? You, you, you take on a tender that you know truly, Maurice, you did not take this tender fairly, yeah? Or you, or you take bribe, or the stuff that we bring into our homes. I used to tell my children, you know the reason why I tell you not to do things. You know, even um, as we talk to young people and we say, you get into habits such as, you know, even sexual sin like pornography. Those are the cast things that you bring into the home. And as a result, your entire family suffers on the account of that sin which, which you thought was a private sin. I don't know, Maurice, very quickly, if you could, you know, speaking to our contemporary world today, yeah. how do we protect ourselves from these things which look little? Because Achan, up until that time, he thought it was really small. Because if you think all these spoils, what is a garment and a few silver, but the cost and how heavy it was? Yeah. This, thank you very much, my sister, for bringing that perspective. Mm -hmm. This is the, the sin that I think, in my estimation, the Christian falls for almost on a daily basis without knowing. Mm. Because one, we said it's a heart sin. It yeah. starts from the mind. Mm. So whether you, whether you go ahead and steal it like Achan did, mm. you know there are two steps to it. Mm. So the first step is in the mind. Yeah. So the moment you covet, you have sinned. Yes. So Achan did not just covet. Mm. He coveted, but the sin of covetousness led him to steal or led him to withhold unfairly. Yeah. Now, Joshua's, Joshua's uh, instruction came from the law. Mm. No wonder Achan and his family met that type of punishment. Yes. It was not Joshua's own words. Joshua mm. told them, go and bring silver and gold into the treasury of the house of God. Yeah. Mm. All right? Mm. Because these things were spoils that came from God's own victory. Mm. Actually, Jericho, um, you know, besieging Jericho was the first battle mm. that Israelites fought in the land of Canaan. Yeah. 
all right? And this first battle was the easiest for them because there were no weapons. Mm. They were only to blow trumpets mm. and go around the city seven times. Mm. And this, so this was God's symbolic way of telling them, you know what, if you continue depending on me in this new land where I've brought you, you will not have to use any weapons of warfare. Your only weapon of warfare will be depending and trusting in me. But, 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 but Achan, somehow, he, he, he forgot about this thing. And, and I like the way Ellen White puts it in the book Desire of Ages, that out of the millions, <laughs> you know, out of the millions of uh, Israelites who had gone to besiege the city Jericho, it's only one man, Achan, who, who, who was found to be covetous and who was found in this sin. Can you imagine out of a million or millions, how many people were fighting this sin of co or urge of covetousness? I gather there could be many, but the one the one man who yielded and went the, to the, the extra step of even withholding unfairly. Now, bringing it to our contemporary, um, you know, uh, uh, situation, it's, 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 it's a bad, it's a bad uh, you know, scenario, really. It's a picture that is ugly to paint because most of our children feed from goods that are Akan-like, you know? The Akan type of goods or the Akan type of goods, are the ones that we feed our children. We clothe them, we feed them, we take care of them, we nourish them using stolen goods, stolen property. Today, I don't know about other countries, but in Kenya, it is very difficult to find one man, just one, in a, a, a leadership position or in a position of high trust, whether be it in church or in the secular world be it, think about leadership, just think about leadership, whether in church or out there, it's difficult to ju just one man who can stand against the sin of covetousness and would not just sinning or coveting in the mind, mm -hmm. but going ahead to, to, to plunder the spoils. Oh, so wow. I think it's a challenge to us. Yeah. It's something we are living in on a, with, with on a day-to-day -day basis and we need to self-examine ourselves. Mm. Yes. Wow. Elder, it all begins in the heart and one of the examples that this week we were given was the heart of Judas. Judas had been with Jesus for all those three years. He had been trained among the eleven. And he was close to the heart of God. Yet in his heart was found this sin of covetousness. I don't know, take us through for us to understand this man and what this sin costed him. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh... It is very shocking eh? that Judas had a privilege which uh, all of us living now will never have. Yeah. Imagine the, 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 the most common thing we know about Jesus is when we pray in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But you can imagine Judas had the opportunity to walk mm. with the Savior yeah. of the world. Whom the Bible says that whoever believes in him shall not do what? Perish. Perish. In fact, Judas could have been saved physically. Yeah. yeah? But he chose otherwise. Because this sin, when entertained, it blinds your mind. Yeah. You can't see anything else. Mm. Except that which you are desiring. Mm. That evil desire. You see, when Mary is anointing Jesus, mm. what does he see? Mm. He misses money. He sees money. <laughs> and not yeah. just money, but money for mm. himself. Yeah. To the point where he says, mm. what a waste. Yeah. The money could have been given to the, to the poor. To the poor. Mm. I, I, I like the way the, <clears throat> the Bible puts it. Mm. <laughs> Why did he say that? Mm. Verse chapter 12, mm. verse 7. Yeah, verse 6. Mm -hmm. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, mm. <laughs> but... But because he was what? 
a thief yeah. and had the bag and bear what was put there in mm. can sad. you imagine That's sad. Yeah. he was using the mm. poor as what an yeah. excuse mm. because his heart knows that once that money is put to the mm. treasury yeah. in the name of oh, the poor I will be able to do what? To, take it. to steal mm. that particular money. Yeah. And <clears throat> because the sin of covetousness leads to death mm. of others and yourself, yeah. this sin killed Jesus. Yeah. It also killed, killed him. Oh. You look at uh, Matthew mm. chapter 26, yeah. verse 14 to 16. Mm when he went to the high priest mm. and betrayed Jesus mm. in the hands of a sum yeah. much smaller mm. than what? Mm. <laughs> Mary's what? A gift. Yes. Third pieces of what? Of Silver. Mm. He was willing to die, mm. lose his eternity, mm. and also kill Jesus. Yeah. It, is, it is so shocking. Yeah. So this heart of Jesus, uh, of Judas, Judas, sorry, mm. It is one of the hearts that if we do not surrender, mm. just like Judas, mm. we are destined to do what? Yes. And I want to challenge all of us, starting with myself. Mm. Can we fight this sin of covetousness? Mm. Uh, Brother <laughs> Morris brought it out very well. Finding one man. <laughs> I'm taking that statement very seriously. Mm. If Morris was trying to find out, mm. <laughs> can he find that probably I could be that one man? Mm. Could he find out that Sister Massey could mm. probably be that one person eh? yeah. mm. who is feeding yeah. their children on that which God has given them? Amen. Elder. In fact, my sister... Mm. The sin of covetousness yeah, makes God call us robbers in the book of Mal Malachi. Malachi. That we have evil desires that we even eliminate God yeah. and use that which belongs, belongs to him. To God. Thank you. Our time is really running uh, this morning. But um, powerful lesson there. You know, we're told, actually, you talked about in the end, we all have character defects that if, not, uh, that if we surrender... We can overcome by the power of God, but unlike Judas, Judas did not surrender. I wonder if you're willing to surrender. This morning, another couple that we see in the word of God is Ananias and Sapphira Morris. And we see a couple who had seen the church and the blessings that came with giving of themselves and of their properties. Yeah? And they sit together as husband and wife, as you and Maureen would sit and say, can we, let's sell you know, this piece of land and give the money for the work of God. And, the, and, and the, the, the land is still yours up until this point when you come to the church and say, we are selling this land and we will give the proceeds of God. Take us through the story of Ananias and his wife and, and how sadly it all ends. And for us to just see why is the Bible, why is this story in the Bible as a warning to us? Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, I am really tempted to say one word yes, sure. on, on, uh, on the heart of Judas mm. just before I, 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 I move to Ananias and Sapphira. I mean, we know when you talk about Judas, people think that this was one, one really big you know, scoundrel of a sinner, mm. robber, a, a very, very bad guy. But this is not the truth. Imagine he was among the 12 and he walked with Jesus all these years. And Judas had a genuine desire in his heart to be saved. He had this secret sin that was harboring in him called covetousness. And he was hoping that he would, at some point he would come to a full surrender, you know. But he kept fondling with this sin. He kept toying with it. And so at some point it, over, it overpowered him. And, and, and this is the reason why it is very dangerous for us to keep fondling with secret sin. And you know, it's secret in the sense that it's in you, nobody knows, but you don't know when it's going to overpower you so that it kills you and even kills the Savior on the cross. So I think that, 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 that is one part that I really, really wanted to, to bring about. Ananias and Sapphira are an interesting pair. 
because the early church in which they belonged was one very powerful church. And them, like, uh, like uh, Judas, also had a very rare privilege to be among the really, I mean, the real pioneers of Christianity. They were among the first congregation, you know, of those who were called by the name of Christ after, the, after Christ ascended. And, 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 and we know the story that during this time, uh, the Holy Spirit, it was just after the Pentecost day. You know, the day of Pentecost had just, had just passed. And the Holy Spirit had been poured on the land and on the people so powerfully. So sad. The first sad thing I want to point out is that after the Holy Spirit has been poured, Peter has preached. 3,000 plus have been baptized. People are joining the faith in leaps and bounds in their thousands. And the, the, the Lord is working. You know, the Spirit is moving across the land. And this pair decides to be the exception. <laughs> That's really sad. It is sad to be the exception. When God is doing mighty things among his people, then you are found to be the exception. It is sad to be the Ananias and Sapphira. It is sad to be the Judas among the twelve. It is sad. Not because they didn't know. Now, something you brought out which I really want to, to just... Um, you know, uh, explain and then we, we, we move on. Before Ananias and Sapphira declared that they're going to give the piece of land, it was all theirs. They had not promised anything. But the moment they mentioned or declared that they were going to do it, they, they did it again out of a very genuine heart that they were going to do it. But again, they entertained the sin of covetousness. This is very interesting that whenever you promise, Whatever you have promised someone or God, it does not belong to you. The moment you say, mercy, I will give you this, even if I don't have it, the moment I get it, it does not belong to me because I already promised that I will give it to you. And if I keep admiring and wishing that this thing, would, I would retain it, I'm already coveting. No wonder, Elder pointed out very well, that God calls us robbers because tithe is his by design. It's not a promise that we are giving, we are making. It's not a favor that we are doing him. Tithe belongs to God. So when we covet tithe, we sin. But when we go ahead and use the tithe or spend the tithe for our own good, we are Achan. We are Achan. We have actually stolen. So it is this practical. We have actually stolen from the Lord. Now, I find this really, really uh, interesting and scary at the same time. How many times have I made promises that I did not fulfill? Whether to God or to man, it doesn't matter. You make a promise, you fail to fulfill it, you are a robber. You make a promise, you, you fondle with the idea of keeping or retaining it, you are coveting. You know this thing belongs to you originally, but you have already committed that you are going to give it to someone the entertaining the thought that it belongs to you is covetousness. Thank you. Wow. Helda, that is quite powerful. I had never thought about it that way, actually, Maurice, because I realized, I, I was, as, as you were talking, I realized how many times. So I've got sisters. I grew up with sisters. And, you know, you have a tendency to share stuff, clothes and everything. And I'm the one person they normally say, when Mercy gives you something, just know you have not been given forever. She'll because take it one back. day I'll take it back. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll go back and say, return my dress. Yeah. I can wear it again. Um, now I'm learning that uh, when I make a promise that um, it really does belong to God. And Elder, I was thinking about, you know, when I looked at Ananias and Sapphira, and, and really the fact that this couple, you know, they did not have to give their land. You know, it would not have been seen had they not given that land, actually, because no one had asked them to do it. And sometimes the temptation, when somebody stands up here, we are going to be making a call for, you know, for fundraising for the children ministry, um, I think today or, to, or, or next Sabbath. And sometimes when someone stands up here and makes an appeal, and we give out of emotions, yeah? Is there something wrong with that? Because... Um, would you prefer to go back and have a discussion with your wife and say, how much should we give for this cause? Or should you feel, you know, is there a tendency sometimes to make people give out of compulsion? Yeah? Um, because then sometimes then you make promises that you're unable to keep. I, I want to look at it this way. Mm. 
it is not bad to make an appeal to people to give because God's cause must be what undertaken mm. today yeah. we are going to make an appeal for VBS yes. this is for our children to go closer to God Amen. and we have gone a step further mm -hmm. we are remembering our children in Saikeri mm. we have been supporting them mm. we have remembered to mind children's home yes. we need these people to be fed mm. God's word mm. we are going to make an appeal and it is in order. Because sometimes we may not be able to visualize. Yes. And that's why we make what? Appeals. Yes. We have even seen in the Bible. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Appeals being made. Yeah. And uh, you remember even uh, Paul saying <clears throat> that the Macedonians gave more than yeah. what they had. Mm. Can you imagine when someone is giving more than what yeah. they have? Mm. It's amazing. Eh? Mm. So... The question is now on the individual. Mm. As a person, mm. what do you promise? Mm. Mm. Yeah? Don't make what? A rash decision. Yes. Pray over it before you do what? You care. Yes. Mm. I've been told also stories of people who have given a whole year's income mm. to God's cause. Yes. And God has blessed them. Amen. Others have uh, given a whole month's salary. Mm. That's actually how we acquire this property mm. we're in. Mm. People committed a whole month's what? Salary. Mm. I, I don't want to imagine how they survive those months. Eh? Mm. The thing is, when we commit to God, mm. and actually you, you brought it out, mm. if we surrender to God, mm -hmm. God takes control. He can tell you how much you can promise mm. or you can commit mm -hmm. to his cause. Amen. And once he tells you and you make that, mm. he makes provision. Mm. In fact, many times, eh, I've, I've uh, had many people who say that when I had this appeal, mm. I went on my knees and prayed about it. And God provided what I brought. Thank you very much. Amen, amen. So anyone who is watching us, dear viewers, when the appeal goes out to support the children, please do, because that is one way of giving back to the Lord's work. Um, overcoming covetousness. I think this morning we have learned that um, this is a scary scene. I, honestly, I think for me, I had never realized the magnitude of the scene of covetousness. You know, when it says thou shalt not covet. And, and Elder earlier you had asked me, what we what we call covetousness in my in my language and as i thought about it is when i realized wow that's a deep word eh? that's a deep word in terms of you know um covetousness and what it means i think covetousness we have told is a matter of the heart and like pride and selfishness it goes unnoticed which is why it is so deadly and deceiving because nobody, like you had said, Maurice, earlier, no one really knows when I see your wife in a beautiful dress and I want that dress. Really. It's, it's really in the heart. Eh? But how then? We, we, we look at, um, and, and probably we should open First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and Maurice, you can start. As we look at the promises that God has given here, and why it's so important to understand that in the context of covetousness, as we look at how do then do we overcome this sin, Elder? Because now we have known what a deadly sin it is. How do we overcome it? So let's Let's have a look at uh, 1 Corinthians 10.13. Um, uh, and, and Maurice, maybe you can then help us understand in the context of that, how do we, how do we overcome this sin? 10.13, um, uh, you can read it. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm not there yet. Elder, no, but even you as you open it, I'd just like to mention to our viewers that you can uh, drop a comment uh, on our YouTube uh, channel, the comment section. Uh, you can maybe throw in a question. If time will allow, we can see if you can sample a few of them. That's true. Yeah. So let me you read it? Uh, yes. uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. The Bible says, No temptation has overcome you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Three things, eh? One, no temptation has come to you which is not common to man. Mm. In another verse, I think in the book of James, the Bible says that Elijah was a man just like us, subject to like passions, mm. and who 
who, who was taken to heaven by a chariot of fire, tell me what's his name. The only man who God said, now, Appa, you don't belong here. Let's go. Apart from uh, Enoch. Enoch, we don't know the mode in which God took him. But for, 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 for Elijah, everyone saw him going. You know, so so he was it was just like us. So the first thing to remember is whatever temptation you're going through, whatever cov whatever the, the you know the the weight of covetousness in your heart, know that it someone else somewhere had overcome it. Amen. All right. The th the second thing, God is faithful. Amen. For me, I think that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. That before before be before Paul says the point, before he makes his point, he reminds the reader that God is actually faithful, oh. which means, <laughs> pause. Why is he saying God is faithful? Mm -hmm. is, is, God so, is, God, is, is the faithfulness of God exemplified in our temptations? Mm -hmm. Does God tempt us because he's faithful, but God does not tempt us? Yes. Does he allow temptations to come to us because uh, he's faithful? Mm -hmm. Precisely no, mm -hmm. but the, word, the reason he's saying God is faithful is because God is caring and loving even in, in that temptation. Mm -hmm. he is, that temptation is like a chisel that he's using to to, to shape us. It's like the refiner's fire that is supposed to bring the pure gold in us. So that's why his faithfulness comes in. And then lastly, with every temptation, we will make a way to escape. So can you imagine when you are coveting and the weight of covetousness is weighing you down and you feel like, wow, I think I'm just going to get this thing for myself. I'm going to kill that guy and get his property. Can you imagine God has already made a way for you to escape? All you need to do is depend on him and he will show you that way. I think that's really powerful. Then the, the, the commentators gave us some three steps. I think we are going to talk about them. Someone else can talk about them. Deciding, mm. praying, and then Bible study. Very yeah. true. Yeah. Elder, we are overcoming this sin. <laughs> All of us, we are overcoming this sin. Because it's very clear that each one of us, it's possible. Can you imagine that we struggle to overcome visible sins? You know, we struggle to, like you said about, you know, we have children. And when your child lies to you and you're saying, oh my goodness, how did my child just lie to me? If we're struggling to overcome sins we can see, how about the sins that are not seen and nobody else can see, not even uh, your own spouse? But we have been given, um, like, you know, like sort of um, a guide of how can we overcome this? And maybe you can take us through some of those that the lesson writer was looking at us, how to help us overcome. Okay, <clears throat> something very interesting. Eh? Um, as uh, <clears throat> Morris was explaining, uh, I, I remember something we were sharing somewhere. <clears throat> that this verse, how can God make a way of escape for you in a temptation? Mm. Yeah? Before I may I... I mentioned this uh, points that um, Morris has uh, already talked about is you must be with him. Amen. Otherwise, Amen. how can he show you if you are not with him? Amen. You know, Amen. like now here, your parent could be very far. How can he show you? Yes. Are you seeing that? Mm. So, we must run away from the territory of the enemy. Because if we say yes, if temptation is come, we can overcome. How comes that Akan didn't overcome? Mm. How comes that mm. <laughs> Judas didn't overcome? Mm. How comes that Eve did not overcome? Mm. It's because these people went to the enemy's territory mm. and eliminated God from their lives. So they could not be able to overcome. The temptation overcame them because the person who was guiding them was the devil himself. But... When you are with God, he will guide you. And that's where the lesson writer was saying uh, that we must make a decision to serve and depend on God and choose to be part of his family. So he can only guide you if you are within what? The family. Number two, be daily in prayer. <laughs> Jesus' is prayer, uh, the Lord's prayer. Lead us not into what? Temptation. Temptation. Oh. What is your first statement in the morning when you wake up? <laughs> Do you tell God, protect me this day? Mm -hmm. Because 
if you don't wake up with him and allow him to walk with you definitely you are going to be overcome can all of us imagine those temptations we have overcome i know we have sister masi i know you have yeah uh, brother <laughs> morris i know you have come a temptation and you know you overcame it that temptation that you overcame if you trace back you could find that in the morning you woke up and told God, walk with me this day. And he gave you power to do what? To overcome. Number three, be regular in Bible study. If we hide God's word in our heart, Psalms 119.11, we will not sin against him. Why? Because it is usually a reminder. I have seen uh, um, when we grew up eh, that those pieces of advice we were given yeah, by our parents, by our guardians, by other adults who told us that if you want to succeed, do this, do this. And we kept those words. When we are confronted with situations, we remember those words and they guide us. And when we keep God's word, in our hearts, every time we are confronted with that situation, we remember God's word, what it tells us to do, and we are able to act appropriately in that particular situation. Thank you very much. To just yes. uh, just chime in a little bit. This is this is uh, burning. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, deciding um, not to covet is in Joshua twenty four thirteen. Choose it this day whom you will serve. So it's a matter of choice. That is, that is, how, that is how, 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 can I say, um, how good God is. He does not stifle us. He does not like force us to follow a certain route. Mm -hmm. It starts from you choosing. Mm -hmm. Then we go to the next uh, part, mm -hmm. which is Psalm 119, 11. Mm -hmm. uh, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Mm -hmm. Now, hiding the word of God in your heart through Bible study mm -hmm. is like shielding yourself also mm -hmm. against the sin, all sin, including the sin of covetousness. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says that, um, you know, um, the, 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 uh, 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 the word of God is able to protect us through this. Uh, that is what it implies, that the, Bible, the word of God is actually able to protect us from sinning when we hide it and you know the flip side of the of the this psalm is also true mm -hmm. and i think david says it in another psalm when he says here thy word have i hidden in my heart that i may not sin against thee mm -hmm. he also says in another psalm that if i regard sin in my heart the lord will not hear me how how how, how accurate is that he says here that I have hidden your word, that I will not sin. Mm. So your word will help me. Mm. But he also, also says in another psalm that if I regard sin or iniquity in my heart, then the flip side of the coin is true, that the Lord will definitely not hear you. Mm. And then um, I think those are really uh, powerful uh, uh, tools, mm. so to say, mm. that we have to prevent or to overcome covetousness. The covetousness will find you when you're walking outside the, that, the sanctuary, when you're driving into the compound, mm -hmm. when you're going into your house, when you're walking into the office, when you're just walking randomly on the street, mm -hmm. covetousness will linger somewhere. Mm -hmm. You will see something. And let me, let me just say this. It is not wrong to desire, to, to desire a good thing. Mm -hmm. So if I see a good quality in my elder Manyara, mm -hmm. I mean, if I desire to be like him in the positive, mm -hmm. it's a powerful speech, he's a preacher, he's a prayerful man, you know, he's a hard-working, industrious, caring man to his family. And I want to be like him in that sense. I don't think that is covetousness. But if I, if I, if I, if I see his goods, if I see his beautiful Bryony suit mm. and his silk tie, mm. and I'm like, wow, this should be me. Mm. Then, you know, then I start reasoning like Satan in heaven, mm. uh, Lucifer in heaven back in the days. So I think those are my, my closing remarks. If there is time, moderator, we will look at what is, on, what is going on online. We, we do have yeah. some time yeah. which we can look at that. And so as, okay. as, you, as you're looking at that, let me, uh, we were looking at uh, Isaiah 55 verse 6. And, and, and the Bible says that seek ye the Lord when we be found. I think it's a question of, before we even read that, it's a question of then, how then, who will save me from this body of sin? Eh? And Yes, you know, this knowing your wretchedness and knowing the thanks be to God 
who gives us the victory. You know, I thank God because there is that answer Amen. that tells us that there is a God who is able to make mercy overcome her sin and her sin of covetousness. And we're being told today in Isaiah 55, verse 6 and 7 that seek ye the Lord when he may be found. That, that God is, 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 is willing to be found by us. Eh? Call upon him while he is near. Yeah? Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So there's a bit of the ways, but there's also the thought. Eh? And let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. You know, so there is hope for all of us in our struggles with this sin because as we have now found out that this is a real sin and it's actually the root, in, you know, it's amazing that, you know, when, when we're looking at the ultimate sin, this is where it all began. Covetousness, wanting that which does not belong to you, wanting to be like God, worshipping idols, you know, um, lying, stealing, murder, you know, adultery, all these things come from the root of who we are, what we have and not being content with this that we don't have yeah so i don't know do you do you have some questions that we probably can take yeah just uh, just a few comments yes. brother uh, kevin wangi says today's lesson is truly such a powerful one mm -hmm. having covetousness uh is is being uh covetousness is being compared to idolatry mm -hmm. clearly indicates that it is it's a danger and the consequences too uh, I think he's trying to say something which we can gather. Yes. Uh, may God help us to overcome and rise above it. Mm. Jim Omolo mm -hmm. says, uh, we traditionally understand covetousness as wanting other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of it is just as dark because it is not wanting our own stuff. Ah, not powerful, wanting our own stuff. Powerful. Yeah. Mm. Because once you promise, once you covet, you know you lose. Yeah. And not wanting your own life because Ananias and Sapphira died. Yeah. This is powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then the solution to this covetousness is to walk in the spirit mm -hmm. and not in the flesh. That is Brother Steve Agoso. And so the people there, Becky, Irene, Doti, Mativo, are just saying happy Sabbath from Ruiru, happy mm -hmm. Sabbath from Uganda. Thank you so much for following. Mm -hmm. and thank you for joining us online. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, our dear viewers. As we, ha we come very, very closely to the close of our, of our lesson this morning, Elder, I don't know, as you look at this lesson from start to where we are, and you think about what would you want to be, you know, like your closing remarks and, and, and thoughts that you, you go back home with today. I <coughs> want to say that uh, <coughs> this is one of the quarters that I have been challenged. Mm. It is very, very, very practical. Yeah. A solution to the problems that are facing the world, mm. problems facing government, yeah. problems facing families, mm. a problem facing individuals. Mm. The solution is managing for the master yeah. till he comes. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you saw this one on the wall yesterday mm -hmm. about how the <coughs> Malawian government wants to get out of the economic crisis. Yeah. And one of the suggestions <laughs> is the counsel that is given in this word, quarters lesson. Mm. And a, a journalist mm -hmm. actually is, uh, yes, he's a contributor mm -hmm. called George Ntonya. Mm. He, the title is How to Get Out of the Current Economic Wars. Mm. That is facing Malawi. Mm. And he has put the picture of what? This quarter's lesson mm. and the picture of the president of Malawi, mm. Jaquera. Mm. And <clears throat> he's saying that if those councils mm -hmm. are followed, mm. the problems facing that country mm. will be what? <laughs> will be overcome. I just want to challenge all those of us who are listening. If you are working in government, mm. money that is meant for development, please allow it to go for development. Money that is supposed to buy medicine for sick people, mm. allow that. don't covet that money. Mm. Money that is meant to pay scholarships for children, please allow it to go there. Mm. And if we take this counsel of today's lesson, mm -hmm. beware of covetousness. Mm. 
our countries will change, our societies will change, and even our families will change. Very Thank true. you very much. Thank you. Maurice, your final remarks in a minute. You know, Marcy, what's mm. on my mind is yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Covetousness mm. is actually, the solution is actually in the sanctuary message. Yeah. I know I didn't see it like this up to this very moment mm -hmm. that when when we when when we decide in the book of Joshua choose you this day whom you shall follow that is that is um, uh, you know justification mm -hmm. when you bring the lamb mm -hmm. when they brought the lamb that is blemishless mm -hmm. to the outer court mm -hmm. to be to be to be to be um, slaughtered mm -hmm. they were already justified with God because mm -hmm. they had decided they had the desire mm -hmm. to do right mm -hmm. And then when you walk into the holy place mm -hmm. with the blood of the lamb, mm. you see the table of shewbread, mm. which is the word of God. Mm. Read the word daily. Mm. You, then you also see, um, you also see the, the seven, candles, candle, okay. seven uh, lampstands, mm. you know, mm. which represents the Holy Spirit. Mm. And, the, and as, the, as, the, as the smoke goes up, mm. you know, it's the same way as the prayers of the saints. Mm. God. So pray also daily. Mm. And... and the, 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 Overcoming sin, not mm. just covetousness alone. Mm. If we really want to keep the Ten Commandments, mm. then the, the message is in the sanctuary. Mm. The sanctuary message is the solution. Mm. And we are waiting for that day when finally, on the, because we are living in the great day of atonement mm. since investigative judgment commenced. Mm. So we are waiting for that day when Christ will glorify us mm. and take us with him home, having overcome covetousness. I challenge the two of you, mm. including myself, yeah. to be among that number. Amen. Amen. We come to the close of our lesson discussion this morning. Powerful, powerful lesson. My dear brothers and sisters, covetousness is a sin of the heart. So it's really a question of what is the condition of your heart. And that is a question that only you can answer. I pray that the Lord would look at our hearts. And that's why we're told that the Lord looks at the heart because he knows what's in our heart. May the Lord bless you this week. Next week, we look at giving back. Are we giving back to the community? Are we giving back to those around us? So may the Lord bless you this week, even as we come to the close of our, our Sabbath. And God bless you. Have a blessed uh, Women Ministry Day. And we shall pray as we close. Shall we pray? Loving Father, thank you for that very, very challenging and heavy lesson. Reminding that each one of us must search our hearts. And Father, the heart is deceitful, so only you can search it for us and see if there's any wickedness in us and lead us in your way everlasting. This morning, Father, may you have mercy on us and on those who have been watching and listening to this lesson, that we may glorify your name. Be with us today and this week. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen.